All right, so today we're going to be looking at this airship engine. So when Create 0.5 came out, all my previous engines broke because they use fan engines. So I had to redesign everything to be able to work with 0.5, which meant updating them to use windmills. So what I have here is a completely functional airship engine that I'm actually just going to be dropping into one of my previous builds um, pretty much as is maybe with a bit of modifications um, so I thought I'd go over this build and show you guys how it works and also I guess kind of um, encourage you guys to use it in your own builds if you want so first things first let's see this in action so I've got a controller right here let's see it go forward all right this thing can turn it can go up and it can go down so let's look at the forwards mechanism so basically what we have is a push pull uh, piston setup really simple so these are set to be at um, 128 rpm uh, with these new windmill engines we can get those uh, those speeds pretty easily so we have uh, this piston here that pushes and this one here pulls there is a piece of glue on this piece of chassis. This range is set to eight. Really, that only needs to be one. Um, but it'll, it'll work with eight, but it doesn't have to be eight, actually. So, that's how the forward segment works. For the turning segment, we have this set up here. So we have, again, a windmill. Um, we have this set up here, going through speed controllers. And there's a mechanical bearing connected down here to the secondary chassis. So the way this is connected, it's actually a little bit... It's got to be a little bit tricky. So there's this piece of chassis that has um, glue on it. And it's, it's glue operating through the chassis that's connecting it. So it's not like I glued these two pieces together. This bearing here is not actually glued it's just the glue that's on this piece of chassis that's connecting there so you can do that with the slime ball it's slime ball glue really and what that does is it allows this whole section to move freely but also be moved by the rest of the structure as it moves so we have these two sequence gear shifts down there run for one for right one for left so this can move in any direction. And the lag's pretty good, so it doesn't um, lag too much. And the rendering since, I guess, 0.5 has really improved. So good job on the devs there. All right, so we have this rotational method of going up and down. So previously, I would have used uh, pistons, but I've kind of grown more experience with the whole rotation based movement and this is more compact so my piston setups that I had previously were really tall and awkward these this is more uh, this is more compact so the ship does kind of go a little bit forwards and backwards but only in the animation in the end it will go directly up and directly down so this is pretty robust, I think. So with this setup, I was able to make it so that I didn't need to have um, redstone logic to make sure that all my segments were in place because there's, well, there's no risk because if this secondary segment is not in place, this bearing will not connect to anything. So it just will not turn. So you see right now when it's moving, it's not connected. So it's not like you can rotate your ship out of position. I mean, there is a risk if it glitches and this piece of chassis isn't connecting everything. Um, but, you know, sometimes you can't really combat lag too much, right? If your whole thing just lags out, it's gonna break no matter what sort of safeties and design that you have in place. Um, sort of the same thing for this section here. So this up-down section is connected to the secondary chassis. So if we look at it, we have a system of mechanical bearings holding the same thing to get the whole thing together. Might be a 
little complex, so maybe um, you guys want to take this into your world and have a look at it if you want to get a better look. It might take a while to just play with it to uh, kind of figure it out. So, what happens when this chassis is moving is that it will move this whole section with it so that these redstone receivers will not be able to receive the signal. So, we'll never be able to move the ship up or down when it shouldn't be moved. And it should only be moved when everything's in position. So, if we move forward, what well, you see now this is not in place, right? So now that everything is back in position, it is in place, so we can move the ship up or down. So if I try to move it up while this secondary segment's moving, well you see this got a signal, but it didn't move the whole segment. So that's another safety that I put in here so that the ship kind of doesn't tear itself apart uh, by moving. So, I mean, this here is pretty much, I mean, this could be an airship that's you know, kind of funny looking, but you could, you know, there's a seat and control. So this is, I mean, this is ready to go. So basically, if you guys want to build your own airship, you can just kind of just build a casing around it in the shape that you want. I mean, already there's, you know, this windmill back here looks kind of like a propeller, so that could kind of be incorporated into your build if you want. This too could also be like a, a top propeller too. So really, you guys can do whatever you want. Um, I hope, you know, I hope some of you will see this and use it in your own builds. That would really be cool. Um, you know, I started making YouTube videos because I wanted to make my own airship, but I didn't, there was no, there weren't really any videos explaining how airships work. So that's actually, you know, I just want to get started and just kind of make the videos that I wanted to see, but that I wasn't seeing. So yeah, so here's my airship engine. Um, I hope you guys find a use for it. So um, as always, there'll be a link in the description to the schematic so that you can download it and bring it into your own world. And uh, yeah, so thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.